Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. I am going to cover five gifts with photos that you can make with a sublimation printer today. And I have some pretty unique gifts. Bonus, we are going to make them all with either the Easy Press or the Cricut Mug Press. So I just wanted to show you that no matter what heat press you have, if you have a sublimation printer, you can definitely make these amazing photo gifts. I'm also making all of these by printing on eight and a half by 11 inch size sublimation paper. So that means you don't have to have a big sublimation printer to make big gifts like this photo pillow. So what are we gonna make today? We're gonna make a photo mug and I have a unique idea for a template that I think you'll like. We're going to make a photo panel. So it's sort of like a photo that stands up on its own with the easel back or you could hang it on the wall. And it's a metal photo panel. So I did want to do, this is a metal finish photo panel. And I did want to do that instead of like the white finish that you usually see with sublimation blanks. This gives a little bit of a different look and I wanted you to see that. Then we have a clock, which is probably the most unique sublimation blank we're gonna do. And one of the cutest. Then little bookmarks. So these make great stocking stuffers or just a small gift. So they're a metal bookmark and I have a variety of templates. So you can do a huge wide array of those. And then finally, we're going to do this photo pillow. Now the pillow itself, I'm gonna call it the most challenging project out of the ones that I'm doing. However, you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Just follow the steps in this video to make any of these photo gifts including the more difficult versions. So first of all, let's take a look at the blanks we're gonna use, as well as the supplies you'll need to complete these projects. The five blanks that I'm gonna use for the projects today are a clock, and this is a sublimation clock, and it comes unassembled, so you can sublimate it. And then it does come with the pieces to assemble the clock, and we'll go through that entire process bookmarks, and these do come with tassels, and this was an entire set, and I'm gonna sublimate several. A mug, and you can use any sublimation mug. I'm gonna use this one with the pink handle and pink inside. This is a pillow cover, and it's a polyester pillow cover, and it has these panels where you put images, so that way we can make a larger pillow, even if you have a smaller heat press, and it's a great way to use a variety of photos easily on a project. And then finally, I have this sublimation photo panel, and it is covered in a blue protective film. I'm not gonna remove that yet, but it's a metal finish photo panel because I wanna show you that the metal finish can really make your photos pop. And then I have this little easel back that we're gonna add later after we finish sublimating it, and I'll show you how that works as well. So those are the five projects we're gonna make. Let's take a look at the other supplies you're gonna need. For all the projects, I'm gonna use heat resistant tape and I have this tape dispenser that I like, but you don't have to have that. Protective paper, I like this artist free protective paper, but butcher paper would work as well. Heat resistant gloves. I'm gonna use a lint roller. You could use something like rubbing alcohol in a microfiber cloth, just anything to remove the dirt and debris. And then I'm gonna use a heat resistant mat. An easy press mat would work for most of these, but I find it a little squishy for a lot of my sublimation projects. So in general, I like this firmer heat resistant mat from Artisprey for sublimation. Then you also need a heat source. For the mug, I'm gonna use a Cricut mug press. The other projects are flat, so you could use an easy press or a regular heat press. First, you're gonna need to print your designs. I find that making custom photo gifts is easiest in Canva. And I do have five templates that go along with each of the five gifts that I'm making today. And you can find those below this video. Pull up the template for the blank that you're using. The first thing you'll notice is that there will be some shapes and they'll have like clouds, things like that. That is the area where you add your photo. So we're just gonna drag and drop the photo over into that area. That automatically sort of does the work for you. However, you can change this if you would like. So just double click the photo and you can do things like resize the photo, move the photo around, or even rotate the photo if you wanted to. So you can do all of that within Canva. So add each photo to each of the areas, resize it however you would like it, rearrange it, locate it how you would like it, and then you're ready to print. You would repeat this entire process for each of the templates you're using. 
The only template that doesn't have the little cloud area is the 8x10 photo panel, and that's because the photo takes up the entire panel. So in that case, you would just drag and drop the photo over and make sure it covers the entire screen. Otherwise, the templates work the same. So whether you're using the template for the bookmarks, the mugs, the clock, or the pillow, it would all work the same. So you would see those areas where you would drag and drop your photos, you would then resize them, make them how you want them to be, and then you're ready to print. Now you could also do a little bit, you could also do some more customization here. So let's say on the bookmarks, you don't like the background colors that I used. That's fine. Just pick the background of each bookmark and you can change the color. You can change the color to something that's in the photograph. You can use the color picker to pick any color in the rainbow. You could even use specific colors that you wanted to use. So go ahead and customize whatever template you're using to fit your needs. I will say that the clock template is a little bit tricky because I have those numbers on there. So you'll want to drag and drop the picture over to kind of the very left hand side of that circle and it will fill in that background. Then you would double click over on that very left hand side if you want to resize or move the photo at all. And then the numbers themselves, you can also change the color of those. So pick the numbers and change the colors if you would like. Once you're done with whatever template you're working on and you're ready to download, a couple of different ways you can download. So you do need to download to print from Canva. You can't print directly from Canva itself. So go ahead and click that download button. The first way is to download a ping file. That's a PNG file. And I find that best for sawgrass printers. You can definitely use that with Epson EcoTank printers or the Epson F170, but definitely a sawgrass printer works best, in my opinion, with the PNG file. So go ahead and download that to your computer. Another alternative is to download a PDF for print. Now you do want to download the PDF for print version. And I like that best for my Epson EcoTank or Epson F170 because I find it a little easier to print from my computer. But either option will actually work with all three of those printers. Once you have it downloaded to your computer, you're going to want to print it. And you're going to want to print it the same size as we designed it. Because we designed it exactly the right size for our blanks, we're going to want to print them that exact size. So let's run through how to do that on each of the three printers. If you have a Sawgrass printer, you can use Print Manager or PrintMate. If you're using Print Manager, right click, click Open Local File. Find the file on your computer, and then once it's pulled up, you are going to want to change your settings. So go ahead and change it to whatever surface you're putting it on. Make sure it's mirrored. Make sure you have best quality. Make sure that it's the same size as you designed it in. So generally you would pick preserve layout from designer and just go over to your jobs tab and make sure it's the right size. Do these dimensions match what you exported from Canva? If they don't, you want to change them here. For the bookmarks, the pillow, and the clock, I designed those on eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So you wanna make sure that this screen says eight and a half by 11 so that it is not resizing it at all when printing. You can also change your color management and things like that if you would like, but then go ahead and print your design. For the mug as well as the photo panel, in Sawgrass Print Manager, you can say preserve layout from designer and it should show it to you exactly. And over on that job screen, you can just make sure it's the right size. You can also use Sawgrass PrintMate if you're using a Sawgrass printer. This is a fairly new software. It makes it a little bit easier to print to size. You'll click Add Files and find the file on your computer. Once you find that file, you want to check the height and the width. Is it the same as what was in Canva? If not, you can change that here. And then for your print settings, they actually have some presets. So you can pull up the preset and it will change everything for you. I always double check and make sure everything looks correct, however. And then I also got a color management, and since these are photos, I would pick the photographic setting. And then just print to your Sawgrass printer. If you're printing on your Epson EcoTank, again, you're going to want to choose your settings. Things like your paper type. So this is what I generally like. I like a matte paper type, best quality, turn off high speed or bi-directional, and turn mirror on. And then you might see this a couple of different ways depending on how you're printing. So you can make sure that it is at actual size or you can make sure that it set it to zoom 100%. Either way, it will print exactly the size it's coming in. So zoom 100% means it is exactly the size that it's coming in at, and print at actual size should mean that as well. So try one of those two options, depending on what it shows on your screen. Then for color correction with your Epson EcoTank, you can do it manually or with ICC profiles, 
and then go ahead and click print. The Epson F170 is very similar to an Epson EcoTank, so I'm gonna pull it up. The only thing is there's two options. There's either textile or rigid. So depending on what blank you're using, are you using a textile or polyester fabric? Pick textile. You're using something rigid, like metal, hardboard, or ceramic? Pick rigid. Then be sure to pick best quality, turn bi-directional off, and turn mirror on. And then once again, you wanna make sure you're printing at the full size. So depending on your computer, you might have to do zoom to 100% or tell it to print at actual size. Just depending on what you're printing out of and your computer, I kind of see it both ways. So just watch for those options. You should not need color correction with the Epson F170. So just go ahead and print your designs. And now I have all of my designs printed. So this version is for my pillow and I'm printing two photos per page. So I needed to print several of those to get the nine photos for the entire pillow. Then this one is for the bookmarks, and for the bookmarks I did several because they all fit on one page. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make all of these because they're small and they came in a bulk pack and I had several. Then for the mug, I went ahead and printed the design onto just an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper. If you don't know, they do make mug size sublimation paper and I could have done that here to save paper, but you can also print it if you don't have any mug size paper. And then my clock is here. And as you can see, I mirrored everything and you might be able to see those numbers there. So you can definitely tell on that one. And then finally, for the photo panel, I just printed my eight by 10 photo. So it should look something like this when you print it out. Now, before you press these, each one of these, I would check the dimensions and make sure it's correct and that it fits whatever you're putting it on. So this one, I sized it exactly. Whereas something like the bookmark, I did it a little oversized. So you can see sort of an edge around there. So it just depends on the template if I went a little oversized or exact, but I would definitely measure each one and make sure you think it's correct. And then the other thing I want to caution you about is that if you're not using the exact listing that I purchased, your sizing could be different. So you might need to make your own template. And that especially goes for something like this pillow cover. The squares on mine are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. If you purchase a different size of pillow cover, a different brand, those dimensions might be different. So I would use a ruler to measure these to ensure that they're the right size before you print using my template. The first step is to prep each of your blanks. So for each of these, I'm gonna make sure, first of all, that they don't have any protective film. So definitely these bookmarks do, as well as the photo panels. So I'm just gonna remove the protective film on each one. And then I'm gonna preheat the blanks. I like to be extra cautious, so I'm going to preheat all my blanks, except for that mug. The metal probably isn't completely necessary, but definitely any hardboard or fabric blanks you would wanna preheat. But I'm just gonna, again, just because I'm extra precautious, you can reuse this paper. I just put protective paper on the top and the bottom. And then for this metal, about 10 seconds, and then we just wanna let these cool completely. Now I am going to preheat all of my blanks. So the clock is actually a plastic. I, I thought it was a hardboard, it's not. But I'm still probably gonna do it a little longer. Um, I would say 30 seconds, about half the time. So I'm just gonna kind of preheat everything. This is just to remove moisture and in the case of the pillow, it would be wrinkles that you would wanna get out. This really helps with sublimation. So moisture is definitely the enemy of sublimation and on something like this clock, it can ruin the entire project. And I'm preheating these at 360 because that was the temperature for the clock and the pillow cover and I'm just preheating the rest of them at the same temperature. It's been about 30 seconds, so we'll go ahead and stop that. So this also tells you if you miss getting any protective coating off. So I did not, but there was not a coating on this. If there had been like one of those protective films, like on the bookmarks, it would have bubbled up with the preheat. This one did not, but I can tell there was quite a bit of moisture. So I might even pre-press a little bit longer just to make sure I get that moisture out of there. But 
time was better. I don't see as much moisture. I didn't see as much steam. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the side. It is very hot. So the front of this where the film is, is something called Chromalux. So it is, so it does have a coating that allows for sublimation. You don't wanna get the back and front mixed up. They've actually marked it Chromalux here on the back. So as long as I keep that in mind, make sure that it's always to the back, I should be fine. So I'm gonna pre-press this just a little bit. So we'll remove the protective film. Then just add this to pre-press. Now I might, I will probably break out my larger easy press when it comes to sublimating this one. But for the pre-press, I'm just going to use this smaller version and do a couple different presses. So now I have my printed sheet and my bookmarks. They've already been pre-pressed. What we wanna do is clean each one. So I like cleaning things after the pre-press just because you might get debris on them during that pre-press process. And you can clean these. I'm using a lint roller for the surfaces like this that are metal or rigid surfaces, you can use rubbing alcohol with a microfiber cloth. I tend to just keep a lint roller on hand at all times because it's easier for me. And then we we'll wanna take these, so the white side is where you're gonna sublimate, leave the metal side with nothing on it. So we'll put it white side down and just locate it over the print. Now I made these templates a little oversized and then we're just gonna tape this into place. Now I'm using the smaller easy press for these. So I'm going to cut this bottom off just so I can press them at two different times. And I'm just gonna add each of these. Now just be cautious where the hole is. Of course, that's the top of your bookmark. And you just wanna note where that is. And then once I get another one on there, I can go sort of across the two and hold them from this side as well. So I'm gonna repeat for the rest of my bookmarks and just kind of get them in location and ready to press. Then we have the heat resistant mat covered with protective paper. You put this print side up, cover with more protective paper, and the bookmarks are 390 degrees for 60 seconds. Now you always wanna find the time and the temperature recommended for the blanks you're using. So if you're using a different brand of bookmark, a different type, the time and temperature can vary. So we'll just add the easy press, make sure it covers up the entire thing, press the go button, and I like to press down with about medium pressure. Once the time's up, we'll remove that. I went ahead and put on my heat resistant gloves and I like to peel this hot. You just peel back and see the cute photo bookmarks. So I'm just gonna continue. I will press the other two bookmarks after I peel all of these back and then we'll take a look at those final results. The tassels for these come in the kit. Now that these are cool, we can just tie the tassel on the top. And then once you do that, this one is ready to give. So let's take a closer look at these cute bookmarks. So whichever template you pick, I don't really think you can go wrong. These are all super cute and would make a great gift idea. When you talk about the price per bookmark, they are super inexpensive and such an easy gift idea. And you can do them without photographs as well. So this one is just with a pattern. So pick and choose which way you wanna make your bookmarks and make them for family and friends. Next up is this clock. Again, we'll start by lint rolling it removing any dust or debris. I ended up grabbing some rubbing alcohol and a microfiber cloth for this one. I just wasn't getting it clean enough, like I could still see things. So now that that's clean, so the reason you use rubbing alcohol and not water is because that rubbing alcohol evaporates very, very quickly. So this should dry very quickly, but you do wanna make sure it's dry before you start. And then we're just going to add this. So the white side is where you sublimate, black side is gonna be the back. And we're just gonna add this over the top of our printed picture. Now I have this a little bit oversized, but you wanna make sure that you have the same overhang around the entire thing. That way your numbers will be as centered as possible. And then we're just going to use tape. And I like to tape it straight across from each other and really get it down onto the paper. That way it does not move. 
and I'm probably going to what you would consider over tape this but I would rather be safe than sorry and I don't like ruining blanks so I am an excessive taper. You can definitely try it with less tape but I'm gonna do about like that. So it's eight pieces of tape around the outer edge. Then we have the heat resistant mat, protective paper, and then we're gonna add our clock to the paper. Now one trick I like to do when I'm using the small easy press, and I don't wanna cut my tape here, but I'm gonna cut off this excess. That way I can tell that my easy press is completely on the clock. Like I wouldn't want the easy press off the clock at all. And then you want it print side up, protective paper on the top, and it's 360 degrees, 70 seconds. And it is a medium pressure. And once it beeps, we'll just remove the easy press. Heat resistant gloves once again. And for expensive blanks like this, I like to kind of peek. So the peak test Peel away just maybe a piece or two of the tape. Does it look good? Maybe go from another area. Peel this back. And everything looks good with my peak test, so that means I'm going to peel some more off. And it's looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the entire sublimation print. And that clock looks amazing. Now all that's left to do is to allow it to cool and then we can add the gear mechanism in the middle. To finish the clock, you'll press the clock mechanism in from the back and you'll want to align this hole where you hang it by with the 12 on the clock. Then you'll apply the gold washer as well as the gold nut to the stem sticking out of the clock. You tighten this nut down to hold it into place, but do make sure everything's lined up. You might even hang it on the wall first before you tighten this down. Then you're going to press the hour hand, then the minute hand, and then the second hand goes in the hole at the very top. And we're just going to press those onto the mechanism. Then all that's left to do is to add your battery to the back and set your time. So you just push the hands around to set the time, add the battery, and you have a clock that is ready for your home or to give as a gift. So let's sublimate the metal panel next. So I'm making sure that the Chromalux, like the brand stickers on the back, and I want to sublimate on this surface, and I have my image here. So first we're gonna lint roll this, just to make sure dirt and debris is off. And then we're just gonna add it to the paper. Now I have this sized exactly, so I'm gonna take my time, line this up, and when it's lined up exactly how I want it, I'm gonna use quite a bit of tape here to hold it into place. And then I have this on my heat resistant mat with protective paper over the mat. And once everything is in place, we're just gonna flip this over so you want the sublimation print side up. And you do wanna make sure, so I'm gonna use a heat press that is large enough to cover this entire thing, and then the heat resistant mat is oversized and then I'm gonna cover this with protective paper, and we're gonna press, and this is 400 degrees for 90 seconds. I just cover the whole thing. Go ahead and click the button, and I use about medium pressure. Once that's done, we'll just lift this up. And then with this one, I would probably kinda of do the peak test, so peek up under here. See if everything looks okay. Maybe in a couple places. It does look fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back and show you the results. So here are the results, and you can see just how vibrant an image you can get with that Chromalux, and just how like shiny it is. And I love how this one turned out. Now let's take a look at adding the easel to the back, whether you wanna hang this on the wall, like you could frame it, or you could hang it on the wall with the easel or use it as like to set on your desk. So here I have the easel for this panel and it has a little adhesive strip. Now you can bend this one of two ways. You can bend it like I'm going to, to sit on a table. So you would bend it the long piece to sit on a table. You can bend out this short piece instead to hang it on a wall. 
Now you can bend it after you put it on, but I kind of like to bend it before I do. So to get an idea of how much it'll need to bend, you can kind of hold it up. And I'm going to bend it about how I would like it. So I get a good idea how it's gonna sit on the table. Then get a rough idea of where I wanna place it on the surface. Now, you don't have to get this exact, because like I said, you can bend it after you've adhered it. But I'm gonna mark on three sides, just with a pencil. Then go ahead and peel back the liner on the adhesive. And then I have a rough idea as to where I should put it. And I'm gonna kinda just make sure it's straight and then just hold it down a few seconds and let that adhesive adhere. And then after that is done, all that's left to do is to set it up wherever you would like it. Next, we're gonna sublimate the pillowcase. Now this is probably the toughest project we're gonna tackle. So for each of these, I printed them out two to a page and then I cut them all the white off the sides. This is so I can align it with each of the squares on the pillow cover. So I choose to do it this way and it helps me align each and every one. Now, I'm going to use a product called Ditrans Pro Spray. It's an adhesive spray because the black on at least the pillowcases that I purchased is coming up when heated and the heat tape is leaving marks. So we're gonna try to avoid that by using this instead of tape. So let's go over how to use this first. So I have a box with a couple of my images down inside. Now they're image side up. And then I just shook my spray really well and I'm gonna try it on the side of the box, make sure it's coming out of the nozzle. And then we need a very light coat over these, extremely light. So I'm just gonna kind of spritz it over them. If you mess it up, you can reprint some. So I'm just gonna continue to spray these. Every time I spray, I'm gonna take this out, set it to the side, allow it to dry. So it should be tacky, but not wet. So you don't wanna get these wet exactly, but just kind of spritz over them and get a little adhesive on each one. So I'm gonna continue with this and just get a little adhesive on each of my prints, and then we'll take a look at sublimating the pillow cover. We're also gonna use a lot of paper. So I'm using butcher paper because I have it in a large roll. So why are we going to do that? I mentioned that the black on this comes off when heated. So as I was filming this, this is my large easy press mat and the black came off on the mat. So I am going to give you advice on how not to <laughs> ruin your mat and get a pillow cover that looks good because the back of this test piece here, do you see how you can almost see where the easy press was? We don't wanna do that. So I first have my large easy press mat because we wanna move this pillow cover as little as possible. And I'm covering the entire thing with a huge sheet of paper. Then I have the pillow cover itself and it has a zipper and I've opened that zipper up and I have two pieces of paper and yes, two pieces cut to exactly the size of the inside of the pillow. And I'll show you why we need two, but we're gonna do the first, roll it up, add it to the inside, unroll it inside there so that it fits inside the entire pillow cover. So you want it to go to all the corners and cover the entire bottom in this case. Then once I have that piece on the bottom, I'm going to again, roll up another piece, insert it, again, unroll it inside so it covers the entire surface. So now I have a pillow cover with two flat pieces of paper inside. The first thing we're gonna do is a pre-press to get out all these wrinkles and moisture. I'm just gonna add a piece of paper to the top. So we're just gonna heat this. I have my easy press set to 360 and we're gonna heat it for about 10 seconds everywhere. So I didn't find that the bag got heated enough to worry about it. And then make sure you have it completely covered with paper and we don't wanna move this paper. So I'm gonna move the easy press instead. So about 10 seconds everywhere. Now 
And then when I peel this paper back, you might be able to see some gray. So the black lines are gonna bleed onto your paper. So we're gonna need a new piece of paper every time. So we're gonna have to toss that paper because the black will redistribute on our white areas and then it will be completely messed up. So now we're just kind of gonna make sure we can get all of these straight. And if there are any additional wrinkles here, we might have to press again. So at the bottom down here, I didn't get it great. So I'm gonna add another piece of paper. And the bottom I had issues with the entire time because of this zipper. So what I'm gonna do every time I press, and I should have done this before I pre-pressed it the first time, is flip that zipper out. And you could even tape it out if you didn't think that um, it's gonna stay. But I'm just gonna kinda hold it out and then pre-press again. And that is much, much better. And again, I tossed the paper I just used. So it had the black all over it, I have to toss it. So everything looks really good. Now we wanna concentrate on like one area at a time. So I'm gonna concentrate first on this four square area. Now we wanna lint roll the entire thing. Now, um, it took me about six sheets from the lint roller on the first pillow cover I did. The white squares have less lint, but I just can't seem to like not get on the black portion and it just fills my lint roller up. So I would rather be cautious and lint roll a lot. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and lint roll this entire thing while I'm working on it. So I'm just gonna continue to use sheets of my lint roller and get this as clean as possible. After several lint roller sheets, this looks much better. So again, we're just gonna make sure it's on that heat resistant mat underneath us. And then what I'm gonna do is put two mats inside of it. So I have a Cricut 9x9 mat, and then I have a heat resistant pad from Artispre that's fairly thick. I am doing this to try to protect the back from as much heat as possible. So I'm gonna kind of insert those, and that's why we put two pieces of paper inside. So I'm gonna move this just slightly so you can see. Um, because now I can put this in between the two sheets of paper, and it will protect my mats. So I have one sheet of paper that's gonna protect from the top and one from the bottom, and I'm going to add this mat and this opening isn't huge so you may have to like roll the mat over and then just release it inside and then we just want to make sure everything stays flat so i want a flat sheet of paper on the bottom the mat over that flat sheet of paper on the top and then i'm going to do the mat over this area we're going to concentrate in top left corner so i'm going to put the mat into that top left corner. And I'm just gonna feel, make sure there is paper under it. And then feel, make sure there's paper over it. And then I'm gonna repeat with another mat. I do not want to heat the back, so I'm going to add another mat in the same way and put it again between the two sheets of paper and over the top of that mat I just put in there. All right, and now I'm just gonna make sure they're in the very top corner. Now, we have a flat surface here that is protecting the bottom. Now, we need to add our pictures. The images have been sitting over to the side, face up, and that adhesive has been drying. So it should be sticky, but not wet. And then we can just line these up so we cut them to exactly the size so we can carefully align them on each of the squares. So I'm just gonna line them up, press them into place, and then we'll just repeat over the four squares. If you make a mistake, you can lift it up, readjust it, press it down again. Now we're just gonna press these four squares. So I don't wanna worry about anything else right now. I'm gonna put a piece of paper over those and the timing is 360 degrees for 60 seconds. So I'm just going to put the easy press in place and I'm gonna hold it down 
for 60 seconds, about medium pressure. Then once that time is up, we're gonna lift the easy press straight up. Then we'll lift the paper. Again, we'll have to toss that. And then you'll wanna lift each of your images. So they lift off fine. You don't have to worry about the adhesive on them or anything. And they each look so good. So now we just need to repeat that. There is no adhesive on the fabric or anything. It does not transfer. It just stays on the paper. So everything looks good. And I don't have the tape marks that I have with the other method. So now we're going to concentrate on the next area. So you wanna move from area to area so that we can keep those mats on the inside. We can just concentrate on getting one area correct with our easy press. If you had a heat press, or let's say you were making a pillow that was only this size, or you had a heat press that would cover this entire pillow, you could do the entire thing at once. But I wanted to show you it's possible with any size press. So now I'm gonna reach in and I'm going to move those two mats over. So we're gonna do these two next. So I'm gonna move the two mats over to that area. And this time, just so I can show you, my paper is still white, so I did not activate that black on the back so it is not bleeding everywhere and these are permanent once you're done so you don't have to worry about touching those at all I am going to try to avoid heating them however so I'm going to try to keep my easy press in this black area all right these two are now ready for pressing so I am going to add the pictures for those areas and we'll use the same process as before so just line up each picture I'm gonna reach in one more time, make sure everything's covered. Add a new piece of protective paper. And I can see through this, so I'm going to try to stop where the black line is with my easy press. And then I'm gonna press the go button, press down about medium pressure, 360 degrees, 60 seconds. Then I'm just gonna repeat this entire process probably two more times because of the size of my easy press. So I'll probably do these two and then this one by itself. Here's my completed pillow cover. The only thing I did get a little heavy handed on the adhesive on a few of the pieces and they have some dots on them. Otherwise, I think it looks amazing. So now that we're done with this, we can remove everything and I did not ruin another easy press mat, so good thing. And now the back is all black because we protected it from the heat. In comparison with this version that had tons of faded areas. So I definitely think that the steps are worth it. However, they do take a very long time to do. We'll remove all the paper from the inside. Now I do find that regardless, like there are pillow covers that like this, there are blankets. Any of the lesser expensive ones on Amazon, those are the ones I've used before, they all have the same type of issues. So the tape marks, the black doesn't stay on there. Um, so they are kind of a labor of love, I find. I, I love the look of them. However, they do take a while. So now I'm just gonna add a pillow insert to the inside. And this one is ready to gift. So I would definitely say this one takes the longest and is the trickiest to do, but if you can get it right, it makes an amazing gift idea. I have the mug press over here heating up, so I'm gonna use the Cricut mug press for this one. And I've printed out my design. So if I go from the top, I may need to cut a little off the top. So basically I want the bottom of these to be close to this. So what I usually do is make sure one edge or the other is very straight. This mug, however, is beveled at the bottom, if you can see that. So I'm probably gonna go off the top, but I do wanna raise it up just a little bit. If any of your image gets on that bevel, because the mug press is straight, it is going to look very faded. And I do not want that. So I think I'm gonna cut just a little off the top. And I'm gonna use scissors. Um, you can definitely use a paper cutter if you don't think you can get this straight. 
Then I'm gonna just cut a little off the top edge here. And I think that'll give us a better position on the mug. And I do like that a little better. So I'm gonna run with that. And then I'm going to cut it about the same on this side. So it's about the same. And then I'm gonna cut close to the bottom of these frames. Not worrying about if that bottom cut is straight. So now this one is ready. So now we wanna clean the mug, first of all. And I'm gonna use this lint roller. You can use, again, rubbing alcohol, microfiber cloth. And then because the bottom edge is straight, I'm gonna put the mug upside down. And I'm gonna put my print upside down. And then I'm just gonna kinda of locate the print. And I'm just making sure that it's an equal distance away from the handle. The design is a little small, so it's not gonna be half an inch from the handle. So I'm just gonna make sure it's about equal distance. Then I'm gonna raise it up and I'm gonna take a good look. Like, do I like the location? And I may wanna put it down just a little bit so it does not get into that pink. And I like that. So I'm gonna start using some tape. And I'm first gonna tape it on one side. Then I'm going to pull the print as tightly as I can around. Make sure I still like the location and tape it on this side. And then I tend to be an over taper. I'm just gonna be honest. I like lots of tape because I think it makes a better final project. So I'm going to tape around the top first of all. And I just slightly overlap my tape, push and pull under. And my mug press is ready if you've heard it beep. So it's ready when we are. I'm just gonna go all the way around that top edge just to make sure everything's tight, everything's down well. If at this point I'm thinking, boy, I have a lot of slack in this print, it does not seem tight at all, I would remove it or attempt to instead of ruining the blank and getting a project I wasn't happy with. I would rather ruin the print and print another print. You don't really have to tape all the way around the bottom necessarily. I usually do. Um, when, especially with the larger size mug, so this is the larger mug that fits in the mug press, it has a tendency to be very tight in the mug press and I don't want the mug press to hang on the paper and pull it up because that would be disastrous. So I would rather tape all the way around just to make sure it's down there and that it's not gonna catch and pull my print off. So that is all the way down. With sublimation in the mug press, I like to put a piece of protective paper. This is just a piece of butcher paper and I like to put it around the outside of my mug. And this is only to protect the inside of my mug press. Like I don't wanna get any ink on the inside of my mug press. It's just a pain if you do that. So I like to just kind of tape this into place, especially this bottom edge again, because it is going to probably hang. Then I have my mug press, heat resistant mat ready. When you are heating a mug, the handle stays cool. So if you're gonna grip it by the handle, you don't have to have heat resistant gloves. There's only one button on the mug press. I pressed it to turn it on. It beeped when it's heated up and it turned green. So now it's ready to go. So now we'll just put the mug in. And again, it's a tight fit. You just wanna kind of make sure it's centered in this opening while you close the handle down. Close the handle all the way and these lights will start lighting up and going across. When it gets to this last light, it's just about done. It will beep when it's ready and we'll lift this handle and remove the mug. The inside of this mug press does get hot so don't touch the inside or this portion of the mug. Once it beeps, we'll just remove it. And for sublimation, I like to remove these hot um, I just find the tape comes off easier when it's hot. So I'm just gonna kind of use a weeding hook to grab the tape. And first we'll peel back the butcher paper. And one tip for sublimation, especially on drinkware, is that you can kind of see the sublimation print through the paper 
when it's done and this looks really good. I find that tip really useful if I'm using my sublimation oven just to make sure that it looks like it's actually done. And now it's time to peel it back and see our adorable photo mug. The mug itself is still warm, but you can see just how great this one looks. And I love the little frames and getting to use different pictures around the mug. And I really do love how the placement turned out as well. So now you can make this unique photo mug with photos of your own. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found some gift ideas for the holidays or any time of the year really. So I love giving personalized gifts and gifts with photos are like top of the line for personalized gifts for me. So I love all of these ideas and I hope it gives you some ideas as well. Now if you don't already, be sure to follow my YouTube channel. So it's Angie Holden on YouTube. I have tutorials like this every single week. I love doing sublimation projects and I would love for you to follow along. So thank you so much for watching and following along. Bye-bye.